we have come now to the part of the program, candidates, where each of you will be offered the opportunity to ask one question of one <coughs> other candidate. That candidate who is questioned will have three minutes to respond. The question itself will also be timed. The question must be no longer than one minute in the asking. Now, in the order of rotation that we have thus far come to, that means the first question shall be posed by Mr. Ming. Can I ask the crowd who they want me to ask? <laughs>
wish to make positive change for America. And you have an additional $2,400 after contributing to Mr. Paul's <laughs> troubled by the Citizens United decision. Uh, we've done an awful lot in the state of Maine uh, to improve our campaign finance laws, which have changed quite, quite rapidly here over the last, oh, 15, 20 years. Uh, there was a time when party committees had unlimited ability to contribute uh, entire campaign war chest of House and Senate members of the state legislature, and the, and the legislature making very affirmative moves to, to stop that. Uh, I think First of all, and campaigns are incredibly expensive, and that's not going to change no matter what we do for, for financial reform. What we can do is, is increase transparency so that, so that people know where money is, in fact, coming from. And right now, because of the Citizens United decision, it's harder and harder to know where, who is actually bankrolling candidates, and, and for that matter, in turn, whose interests those candidates will represent once elected. And I, and I think that takes us very, very far <coughs> and I would work very, very hard to clean that up. Um, it, the campaign finance reform is a very difficult moving target because the people that usually call for reform are those who have lost elections. And they're not there to make the changes. And the people that got elected find the system worked pretty well for them. Um, and I don't, and I would agree with you, and I, and I would agree with anybody who says we should do better by the public so the public has a, a clear understanding of how campaigns are in fact financed who we are paying for them. We don't need to have uh, secret holding companies putting up their own shadow candidates in order to influence public policy and skew it further in their favor, which I think we've seen a little bit of, uh, but we can do much, much better in terms of the transparency of finance. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. Now, by the irony of rotation, the next candidate who actually gets to ask the question <coughs> of any other candidate <coughs> is Mr. Dunlop, who has uh, one minute to ask the question, which the uh, question the person asked of will have three minutes to answer. Thank you, Representative Adams. Um, my question is for Representative King. And we've had the extraordinarily good fortune to spend a great deal of time together on the campaign trail for a long time, unlike <laughs> others, other Johnny come lately's. Um, but you know, I've had the opportunity to hear you speak a number of times, and you, you've given great reference to your background, especially with your upbringing in New Jersey. And my question to you is, given you know, the body of your work and your aspirations in the world, who among the US senators from New Jersey do you find the greatest inspiration for? <laughs> it's my best slogan for this race. At least New Jersey is closer than Virginia. <laughs>
But uh, Ed Muskie is actually a great hero of mine, and I, I would emulate his leadership in, for example, the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Safe Drinking Water Act. And we should challenge ourselves. Those look easy today. In the 1970s, those were not easy. What are similar challenges today that we don't have the nerve to me measure up to that Ed Muskie did? Working with Howard Baker of Tennessee, a Republican and a Democrat, in partnership, leading the country and leading the world, by the way, in environmental legislation. I am in awe of the man, and I would like to follow him, and I thank you for the question. <laughs> Not by rotation. The candidate did. A one minute question, three minute answer. Any candidate you care to direct it to? Thank you very much. Um, my question is directed to uh, Mr. Dunlap, and uh, it's a three part question. It has to do with guns. Um, I would love to know if you believe that uh, concealed weapons should be regulated and to uh, amplify a little bit on your opinion about that. Um, whether you are seeking or would accept the endorsement or um, financial support of the NRA. And finally, whether you would describe yourself as a blue dog Democrat. I assume that was a three part, <laughs> one question. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Mr. Dunn, three minutes. Thank you, Representative Adams, and thank you, Senator Dill, for the question. The first question about concealed carry permits and whether or not uh, concealed weapons should be regulated. Well, they are, because we have concealed weapons permits. You have to go through a multi-step process and qualify for one. You have to take a gun safety course. And I think this is actually a, a topic which is fairly timely right now in the wake of what's gone on in Florida. Um, and I think what, and I don't know all the facts of what's gone on down there, at least at the, at the legal level. But it's highly, highly questionable to me why a police department would allow someone working on a neighborhood watch to carry a firearm. Whether they had a permit to do it or not, it's just asking for trouble. Um, and it, I think it, it added something to that mix that should not have been there. If you have a concealed carry permit, there are certain places you cannot carry a firearm, even with the permit, such as a school ground, uh, any establishment that is licensed to serve alcohol. So we have. Uh, we do have regulation, very, pretty good regulation in Maine of concealed carry permits and how they're issued. That's not true everywhere in the country. And I think that's one of the reasons why you don't see reciprocity among states. Vermont does not require a concealed carry permit for someone to carry a concealed weapon. So I, I think there, there is a fair amount of discussion to be had about uh, how, among the states, how concealed carry permits are issued. There is no national concealed carry provision. Uh, it's arguable or not there should be. There's arguments for and against that, but I only have two more minutes and several more questions to try to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as the NRA, I'm a member of the National Rifle Association. I have been uh, most of my adult life. My mother was an NRA member. My mother was an NRA grand aggregate, small bore rifle champion. Um, some great family stories about turkey shoots in Town Hill and state troopers thinking they were to get that frozen chicken until my mother showed up. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I would accept financial assistance from the National Rifle Association. I am a, a Second Amendment person, and I believe in the right of the citizenry to legally obtain and, and use their firearms in accordance with all state and local regulation. Um, it's an interesting, the question about being a blue dog is an interesting one, because I believe that my credentials as a Democrat are as strong as anybody in the state. I support a woman's right to choose, I support marriage equality, I support the government's role in making our environment safe. I support free and free education in the public school systems. I support so many things that the Democrats have fought for and stood for. And yet I get asked this question quite frequently. Can you not be considered a moderate centrist Democrat? <laughs> and why is that? Because I have rifles and I go hunting. That's what makes me a centrist blue dog Democrat. And I guess I'll take that. Uh, but being from rural Maine, I understand this is a, a part of the permanent of our outdoor heritage, and I will stand for it and 